All right, Paul, you've convinced me. Saturn must have been hot when it was young. And so I can see a way of cheating here. We can look in the infrared at stars that are young. So around the youngest stars, they will have young planets. And so their planets will be hot still. They won't have faded and cooled like our planets. And then we can do one other obvious thing, which is why pick intrinsically bright stars? Let's pick the faintest stars intrinsically so that we maximize our chance of seeing one of these young bright planets. Yes, yeah, so this is how we'll cheat, and indeed this is how the first direct imaging happened back in 2004. We're looking actually at brown dwarf stars, a star which is so low mass it doesn't even have nuclear fusion in the middle. It itself is just cooling down like a very big planet. And um, we observe in the infrared, and here we see something near it, 0.8 arc seconds away, it's 55 astronomical units away, so that's actually considerably further out than Pluto is from the Sun in our own solar system. Uh, this thing, from its brightness and its age, is probably about five times the mass of Jupiter. So this is a big object, yep. and it's very young, which is why we can see it. But the star itself is actually not that much bigger. This is only 25 times the mass of Jupiter. So that's almost not a star itself. So, I mean, to me, we're getting into semantics about what's a star and what's a planet. Uh, you know, I, uh, I lost the vote on what planets were in, uh, a few years ago because Pluto was demoted against my wishes. But to me, I always think of a star as being something that fuses nuclear, uh, you know, like deuterium in its core. But this star is not even clear it did that. So I think maybe I can accept that that's a planet. So it could be a binary planet. Some people would say uh, that um, the boundary is nuclear fusion, in which case brown dwarfs are big planets. No. Some people would say that the boundary is 13 Jupiter masses. I don't know why, but that's often bandied around literature. 13 is the boundary, but that seems completely arbitrary to me. Some people will say it's something to do with formation. If something forms like a star does from the collapse of a giant molecular cloud, it's a star. If it forms in a disk around a star, then it's a planet. Um, okay. So what's the case? This case, and this is almost like a binary planet or a binary star or something. They probably, there's no way this could have formed by a disk. It's just too massive. There's only a ratio of five in, the bright, in mass here whereas Jupiter is a thousand times less massive than the Sun. So it sort of begs the question of whether or not we might have lots of objects like that, and maybe these things don't even need one of these to form, if they really are so That's the ultimate way of cheating. Form. Yeah. And uh, we want the star to be as faint as possible. How about not there at all? That's pretty faint. I wonder if we can see any of these things floating by themselves. Now to do this, we're going to need an uh, infrared survey telescope. Finding objects like these was one of the prime goals of NASA's recent mission, the Wide Field Infrared Survey Explorer. This movie from NASA explains what it found. Astronomers are interested not only in the bright stars in our neighborhood, which are easily seen here around the sun, but also the small dim objects we can't readily see. Finding these is one of the prime objectives of NASA's Wide Field Infrared Survey Explorer, or WISE. As we move further away from the sun, we focus only on our neighbors within 26 light years. Within that volume, we increase the brightness of the faintest, reddest stars to make them more easily visible. These objects, known as M dwarfs, are the most common type of star in the solar neighborhood. Now, viewing from a distance of 30 light years, we circle all of the known brown dwarfs, faint objects with too little mass to shine stably as stars do. The blue circles show all of the previously known brown dwarfs, while the red circles show the ones that WISE has identified for the very first time. This updated census of our solar neighborhood now shows that brown dwarfs are much rarer than stars, there being roughly six stars for every known brown dwarf. So WISE has found a large number of these, and some of these brown dwarfs are very, very cool. They're what we call Y dwarfs. Uh, here's how you spot these things. This is an image of the same part of the sky at a bunch of different wavelengths, starting in the optical, and going out into the infrared observed by WISE. And what you see for one of these things is nothing, 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 whoop, nothing. OK, so the idea is that uh, these are in the infrared, and there's water and methane out there, which tends to block all the light coming out at certain spots, like here and here. And so all the light is able to leak out through this one little window this where one there wavelength. isn't this stuff. This window, wa yeah, this window of, of wavelength. And then out here, it's, they're just simply so cool, they don't put out any energy at all in the optical and 
Yes, we're, we're, to we're talking of temperatures of only between like 300 and 500 Kelvin. It's still hotter than Jupiter, but um, comparable yeah. to the Earth. And uh, masses of between, say, 5 and 20 times the mass of Jupiter. Okay, so these objects are uh, sort of, they're big objects. They're almost like planets, but they're not exactly the same as the free-floating planets we seem to have found through microlensing. Those are a fair bit smaller than these. Yes, and also less common. They're, these are far less common than stars, whereas the microlensing planets, there's like 1.8 of them per star. So maybe these are the top of the population. You've got lots of small things which we can't see with direct imaging, but we can see with microlensing, and a few of these big things. Or maybe they form quite differently. Maybe the free floating planets are expelled planets, and these form like small stars. It's and these are pretty common, right? The, the nearest ones are as close as 10 light There's years in distance. one within 10 light years of us. Although, although that's common, it makes them a fair bit less frequent than stars. There's many more stars than one within 10 light years uh, beyond our own sun. Uh, and those free-floating planets are supposed to be as common as stars themselves. Yeah. So maybe we are just missing something, and our whole part of space is full. Of these free-floating planets, we just can't see them. Yes. So by our cheating techniques, looking at the infrared, we are picking up large numbers of either free-floating or binary things that whether you call them planets or whether you call them small stars is a bit of a gray area. I mean, we couldn't live on them. They're much bigger than Jupiter, uh, but they might be quite spectacular things to look at. What we'd really like to know is, are there, uh, can we image things that look more like normal planets?